if somebody knows about the state of world happiness, that's you. So what's going on? Uh, and what do you see happening in the coming in the coming years from what we learn of a decade of World Happiness Report? Well, we've learned two big things. Uh, we've learned that people want to be happy, uh, that they want to, to live in societies that are committed to the common good. We've learned how happiness can be promoted actually. So not only the idea that we shouldn't be happy, but what it takes for a society to help people be happy. Of course, uh, a decent economy is part of that, no doubt. And health is part of that. Uh, people need to be healthy, want to be healthy, and that contributes to happiness. But social connections, uh, good values, benevolence, honest government, these are things that are absolutely key to happiness. And 10 years of analysis has shown that we are happy when we are living in societies that are well-balanced and where people are promoting good values of generosity and compassion and social support. I love this quote um, that you normally say is that actually the well-being, the politics should be directed to the well-being of people, not to the power of the rulers. You know, what's going, I, world, what's going it, on in the in the world, Jeff? It it it's not an original idea with me. Uh, in fact, uh, it is two thousand three hundred fifty years old. Uh, the observation really goes back to Aristotle. Uh, he's my favorite philosopher. Uh, he wrote, of course, in Athens uh, in uh, around uh, 350 BC. He wrote two wonderful works as a combined volume. Very important that they were combined. One is on ethics, the Nic Nicomachean ethics, and the second is on politics. He invented both fields, basically, as uh, areas of study, but he put them together, which we would not do right now, would we? We wouldn't say, well, politics is a, a field of ethics. We would say politics is a field of a lack of ethics. But Aristotle said, no, the idea of politics is the well-being of society. It is the common good. He studied what would it take to achieve a politics of well-being. That includes a number of things. First, leaders should be virtuous. They should have virtues of good judgment, what the Greeks called phronesis, of moderation. Uh, we didn't have that, unfortunately, with some of our recent presidents uh, of uh, what the Greeks uh, knew as, uh, as temperance or moderation a sense of justice and so forth. So the virtue of the leaders, training people in society, in education, uh, for the virtues of children, to help children inculcate good values uh, and uh, these excellences of how to be good citizens. This was the second matter. And then Aristotle said, you know, keep the divisions between wealth and poverty moderate not too wide. You can't have complete equality. Uh, actually, Aristotle's teacher, Plato, uh, had uh, more strict egalitarian ideas, uh, sometimes that all property would be held communally. And Aristotle said, no, no, that's not very practical. We need private property. We need, uh, there will be differences, but keep them moderate. Because if the gap between the rich and the poor widens so much, you'll end up with tyranny. You'll end up with one person demagogic rule, or you'll end up with an oligarchy of a few rich people running the show, or you'll end up with populism, uh, which means that kind of mob rule uh, in the end, uh, rule of uh, envy uh, and so on. So Aristotle said a large middle class, people well-educated, uh, in the virtues of being good citizens, that this would be conducive to the happiness of people. So I found it very interesting that uh, 
ethics and politics at the start of Western culture was seen as the same thing. Machiavelli turned it uh, as two different matters, that one is about power. How do you hold power? That's a game. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you, you, know, you uh, can use uh, treachery, trickery, violence, whatever. And then there's ethics. And that's something that's uh, not about power uh, and even sometimes thought naive. But Aristotle said, no, these two things go together. I love the answer. Um, and actually, listening to it, I feel that we are now living a moment where something went wrong about the decisions that we've been making not to be, not to make people maximizing their well-being. I think real politics in many ways have really created a, a potential a disaster in the world that could become actually a potential opportunity for many if we change things. Can we focus on what can we change? And what can we learn from the World Happiness Report that is helping us to change things? And how many generations are we gonna need in order to get to a point where we are closer to Aristotle than Machiavelli? You know, it's interesting that uh, I'm an economist and uh, economics has a particular uh, history that came from British philosophy. So economics came from philosophers like John Locke, David Hume, and especially Adam Smith. And the funny, quirky thing in economics in this British school of thought was, well, self-love is really the best thing. You should pursue your self-interest. They made a kind of paradox. They said, if everybody pursues their self-interest, that ends up with the social good, as if by an invisible hand was the phrase that Adam Smith used. There's something a little bit to it that if people are have uh, ambition and uh, are going out to be entrepreneurs or make new markets and so forth, then their self-interest can actually increase the, the size of the pie. It can increase the social good. But the whole idea was tremendously exaggerated. The idea that self-interest is the be-all and end-all, even that we should champion selfishness, which is, uh, you know, one popular writer in the United States, Ayn Rand, had the idea that we should actually champion selfishness. Uh, this went way overboard, this kind of philosophy of self-interest thinking that somehow market competition would make everything right if people are trained, just care about yourself. It doesn't work that way. And if uh, countries are told America first, we had a president recently who said that. If every country says my country first in this kind of selfish way, we're gonna end up with a lot of war, a lot of conflict. And then when we have a, a worldwide shared disaster, like with COVID or climate change, we don't even know how to cooperate in a civilized way anymore because you say, no, it's just my interest. I don't, I don't have to do anything with those other countries. This is the mindset that we have to overcome. I'm sorry to say a lot of it started with British economics, which became American economics. That's how I was trained. I was trained with the idea that self-interest is the key to a thriving society. Well, no, now we know some self-interest, that's okay, but some compassion, some mutual respect, some what we now, the term we now use, pro-sociality, so that you know, learn how to cooperate with others. This is really important. It is a new mindset. By the way, one of the people that I find the most compelling maybe not surprisingly, uh, but absolutely compelling. And this is Pope Francis, because this is what his message has been in wonderful encyclicals, which is we will not solve our problems, whether it's climate change or war or corruption, unless we overcome and move beyond the mindset of pure self-interest, that we must understand 
the common good. We must understand how to have dialogue with others, mutual respect with others, universal dignity. And I think that those are the components of making a society that works and a society in which people, when asked about their lives, will say, yes, I have a satisfying life. That's what we measure. That's how we need to proceed to achieve the outcome that we want. So how do you see the next 10 years of the World Happiness Report? What would you take from this decade and move to the next decade? And what do you think should be left behind? Oh, that's a great question. You know, uh, it, this report started 10 years ago. It, it started, uh, it, it part, I was incredibly inspired by Bhutan's prime minister, Jigme Tinley. I listened to him give a speech in uh, Delhi, in India, and I, I turned to my wife. I can remember it to this moment. I said, wow, I, I want to go meet him uh, and uh, let's go to Bhutan. Uh, and uh, we went to Bhutan and learned about Bhutan's quest for gross national happiness. Uh, and then uh, the uh, three uh, founding editors of uh, the uh, World Happiness Report came together for a conference that Prime Minister Tinley called in Bhutan. So uh, uh, Lord Richard Layard and Professor John Halliwell and I, and we stood at the desk of uh, of uh, the president or the prime minister and said, we, sh we should do something to uh, promote this uh, idea. And, and that was the birth of the World Happiness Report and of a UN declaration that said, put happiness into the core of the development cooperation. Well, 10 years we've learned a lot, but now we have to apply what we've learned. It's, it's not good enough to say, well, this makes you happy and this makes you not happy. Now we really have to put these ideas into operation in how our governments function. One of the interesting things, Luis, in this year's report is a finding that actually the use of the idea, the term happiness, is rising compared to GDP, income, and so forth. So we're actually seeing a social dynamic expressing itself, yes, we want to measure well-being, we want to achieve well-being, not just income. I think that this is our real work in the next 10 years. But in every aspect of our social lives, in our individual lives, in our lives as citizens and voters, uh, in our lives as running a business, in our activities, uh, in if uh, we're in politics or hiring uh, workers, uh, in employees, uh, and, and colleagues, or in school, as I'm a professor, uh, schools should be helping people, not just to be happy, but to have the skills to be happy. Uh, and that's true for children, and that's true for uh, a teach at the university level. So I think the next 10 years is, is putting this knowledge to work in a directed and meaningful manner. It's not simple. And we reached the 10th anniversary, I think, at a pretty unhappy time. Of course, we have a raging war, just sheer violence. We have major countries not talking to each other, threatening each other. We have a, a breakdown of civility on the social media, which is really shocking. Uh, of course, we did not we did not work effectively together to get this pandemic under control. This is one of the reasons why it has gone on and on, and it's still continuing because <clears throat> we did not take decisive measures together, whether universal vaccine coverage or other ways to contain the pandemic. So 10th anniversary, we know a lot, but we're not applying that knowledge. 20th anniversary, we've had a great decade. Peace, uh, directing our attention to ending poverty, to achieving sustainable development, uh, to uh, making climate safety. That's what I'd like for the 20th anniversary of the World Happiness Report. Well, thank you. It sounds to me like we have to move a bit more from the head to the heart. So this is, 
it, it, we need that balance. Uh, and uh, we need, you know, one of the things that Aristotle always said is moderation between excess uh, and uh, insufficiency. And that's true of so many things. Self-interest has a role, but if you're excessive and you forget others, it's horrible. Uh, you, can, uh, you, you can be patriotic, but if you don't care about the well-being of other countries, it's a disaster. So we have to find that path of the middle way. And uh, that was uh, Aristotle's path, it was Buddha's path. We, we have a lot of wisdom to go in that direction. And I think that's what we need to do. Well, thank you so much for this decade. And, uh, and, and as you know, we are here to work and support the next decade from the heart. Well, you congratulations know. to you. You've really <clears throat> spread the word and helped people to come to this agenda and understanding. It's a wonderful, wonderful contribution. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. We'll talk soon.